Hi there, this is Dave with the National Gardening Association. I am here to talk today about seed swapping. Uh, you know how seed swapping works. Um, basically, when you're, when you're trading seeds with somebody else, uh, you look at their list and you say, well, I want this and that and the other. They look at your list and they say, yeah, I want this and that and the other from you. You make an agreement. I package up your seeds. I mail them to the guy. He mails back to me his seeds and we're done. Now, that works fine as a person-to-person -person, uh, swap, but what we have at the NGA is the most awesome feature. It's a group swap. So imagine it works like this. Um, you've got a bunch of people. Let's say you've got 25 or 30 people, and they all have this huge list of all the seeds they're offering, and everybody's looking at each other's lists. They're calling dibs on on all this stuff. So, like, you know, packages are flying back and forth. you got, I'm going to take this from that guy and this from the other person, and you're basically building up a cart as if you were shopping on an online store when you're done. Uh, and, of course, other people are also calling dibs on your seeds. And so when it's all done, you are given a list of all the seeds that were um, requested of you. You pack, package them all up, mail them to one central person. That person then takes the seeds from everybody and then boxes them up in, for each person. And then <clears throat> mails out to you your box. And you get a box full of you know the 100 different seeds that you asked for. Uh, so this way you can do a huge trade and you only have to mail out one box and you only get back one box. So it is a phenomenally awesome system. So people are asking, uh, how do you get started? It's not difficult. It can be a little intimidating just if you've never done it before. Uh, and so that's what this tutorial is for, is just to show you how easy it is. Uh, and it'll only take about maybe five minutes. So let me just go through this. So if you go to the garden.org website, you got to make sure you're logged in. If you don't have an account, just create an account, log in, it's all free. Click on tools and apps up here at the top, and then click on seed swaps. And here they are. <clears throat> You'll notice that there's already some current and active swaps that you can join. And on down the line, don't join any swaps yet. The first thing you want to do is you need to set up your own list of the seeds that you're offering. Really, you should do that before you do anything else. I mean, you don't have to do this first, but I kind of recommend it. So as you scroll down past this list of current swaps, there's a button that says View and Manage Your Primary Swap List. Click on that, and you'll see it's empty, and that's because you don't have any plants. So uh, let's click to add a new item to your swap list. So let's say that I saved seeds from my dynamite crate myrtle. So you just start typing in, and you'll notice it's searching the database of plants as you type something in. So uh, there it is, crate myrtle dynamite. Click on that. Number of packets available. How many? Well, I've got 10. And how many seeds are in each packet? Well, about 50. And then the source of the seed. This is self-collected. But if you, if you bought the seed, you could you know choose commercially purchased. Uh, or if it came from a different trader, you know, let's say you got it in a pre previous trade, you're like, eh, change my mind, I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, so anyway, pick what kind it is. Availability. You can tell it to um, you know, add it to your list now and show it and make it available for trade so everybody can see it. Um, but maybe you want to add it and maybe you don't want anybody to see it for some reason. Like, I can't think of why you would do that. But let's just say you didn't want other people to see it. You can say, don't show this publicly yet. And then later you can come back and edit this and change it to make it available so that's fine now under the comments uh, you can put whatever you want to but like you know it's nice to say you know what year so harvested 2016 from five different dynamite trees and if you want to post a picture you can click on choose file and that'll open up a dialog box that you can then you know pick the JPEG um, I'm not going to add a picture to it though um, click on add the item and it's been added. So you can click to add another item and it takes you straight back to that page again. So let's add another one. Um, let's say uh, basil. I've got um, basil and what I've got is Napolitano. So let's see if I can find this. Napolitano. Is that it? No, it's not finding it. Let's just scroll down here and see if it's in the list. Maybe that's not even a cultivar, is it? Hang on, let's just see. Napal. Oh, there it is. Okay, well, anyway, I didn't find it at first, but you guys sometimes search for different words, and you know, it'll come up. So there's basil, Napolitano. Just ignore that stupid thing. I need to fix that. Um, number of packets available. I've got 10 quantity per packet. These are basil seeds. They're tiny, so there's about 500 seeds. Self-collected. Da-da-da. Let's see. Let's just say harvested 2016, and add the item. Okay, let's view the list. Okay, and you can see that I've got these two plants in my list now. Now, you notice that in both cases, I, I had searched for the plant and found it in the database and clicked on it. But what if I have a plant 
that's not in the database. Like for example, let's say that um, let's say that I crossed a couple data lilies together, and I have a seed pod that has seeds from it, and it's from a specific cross. Which of course we're not going to have an entry in our database for that cross. So that's in that case, you can just type it out. So you can say data lily, and let's just say that it was a primal scream crossed with Stella Dora, Dora, whatever. Number of packets available, one, and let's just make it five packets, and there's only three seeds per packet. Uh, Self-collected, da, da, da. From a, from a cross I made in 2016. Okay, add the item, view your list. Okay, so now you'll notice that here's the daily that I just added, but it's not a hyperlink, where these two are hyperlinks. Um, these are linked into the database, as you can see. Here's Crate Myrtle. Uh, you know, this is our plant database. Um, but that doesn't have a have an entry, and so that's fine. So you can do that, and um, that works out just fine. Now, you can edit any entry by clicking on this little edit icon, or you can just delete it by getting click on the trash can. But let's just say that we're done now. Uh, let's go back to the seed swap homepage. I now have my own personal swap list set up. So, as you scroll down here, you'll see that some of these have a status of recruiting members. So this one is recruiting members. That was recruiting members. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to join my own swap here. This is the um, that beta first swap that we made a long time ago. Um, so anyway, for now, status is recruiting members. I clicked on it. Up here at the top, you're going to see a bunch of threads. Um, most swaps have this. These are threads. These are discussion threads. It's just like a forum. So um, the host might post questions, uh, post updates, important notices, things like that. If you have any questions about the swap, you can probably find the answers in these threads. But scroll down past that. And you can find a bunch of information, um, details that the that the host put in, um, telling telling you like you know how much you're gonna have to pay, because uh, there is return shipping, of course. So you're gonna have to send some money to the host when you send their seeds. Gives you the dates of when the um, when does enrollment begin, when does trading begin, when do you have to send the seeds, and so you kind of want to look at these things and make sure that you're gonna be available during those times. And once you agree, it's looks good. Click on join this swap. Yes, join. Hey, you've joined the swap. So now follow the links below to set up your swap items. Uh, you can go um, back to the swap homepage. You will see um, there's new stuff now at the top. So this is the same page with all the threads, but now there's new options available for you. And by the way, if you ever get lost and you need to get back to this page, just go to Tools and Apps, click on Swap Lists, scroll down and find the one. So this is it. It says you are in this swap. So that's the one. So I'm going to click on that. Now, so you can manage your own swap list. This takes you back to your main list. You'll notice here's the basil, here's the dynamite, and here's that daylily. Now, notice there's a new column that says swap number one. So the swap number one column refers to this swap that I just joined. To, to enable seeds for the swap, you click on the icon to make it green. So in other words, I can have a seed list, and then I can choose which seeds go into which swap. So, for example, if I'm if I'm a, if I'm joined into three different swaps, I might want to only offer Napolitano to just one of the swaps. So I would, you know, underneath of it, like there would be multiple columns here. There would be swap number one, swap number two, swap number three, and up here it would tell you which one corresponds to which swap. So click on this, click on that, click on that. You've just enabled these seeds for those swaps. This is an important thing because without doing that, they don't appear on that swap. So once you're done. Return to the swap page, go back into that swap. I'm done with that. Now we can look at the full trade list for the entire swap. And here it is. There's 20 pages of, of plants. So it's about, what, 20 times 20 entries per page. That's like uh, 400, 400, 4,000? I don't know, whatever. It's early in the morning for me. Um, but so here they are. They're sort of alphabetically arranged. Um, you can just kind of uh, just scroll down through here. You know, it's, it's still... You know, this swap is currently in recruiting. It's, you know, the swap is still recruiting members. So you can view the list, but we're not trading it. But what you can do is, as you're looking through it, you can start to um, put together uh, a wish list of things that you think you might want. So, for example, um, I'm looking at this banana cana, musifolia, thinking, I want that, so I'm going to give that a three stars. And that puts it into my wish list with three stars. Just scrolling down through here. Um, ooh, black-eyed Susans, I like those. I'll put the two stars. Um, nothing else is jumping out at me. Let's keep on looking. You're just kind of scrolling. Ooh, Baptizia, I want some of that. So you give that three stars. Uh, ooh, Bok Choy from Rick Corey. I know that's going to be awesome. I'm going to give that five stars because I need that. Another Bok Choy, I'll take it too. More stuff. Never heard of those. More Bok Choy. All right, Rick. 
actually Rick has some interesting stuff. So here's what you can do. You can say view items only from, and then there's a little pull down so you can choose Rick Corey. Update the view. And now here's just the seeds that Rick Corey is offering. Lettuce, ooh, I need that Tom Thumb lettuce. So give it five stars. Shard, Verde Acosta Blanca. Okay, that sounds good. Three. And Dutch corn salad, definitely. And hauling, I don't know. Okay, that's enough. Let's look at Horn Toad and see what Horn Toad's offering. There we go. Just having so much fun. No items. Well, Horn Toad, what are you doing, man? Maybe Shell has some stuff. You'll notice here Shell has this info box um, information up here. Uh, I'll show you how to set that up later on. Um, Shell's got some nice stuff. Let's see. Cypress vines, pretty normal. I don't think I want that. That's, that looks interesting. You can click on this, and it actually shows you information about the plants. So there's a picture. Uh, it's an herb. It's annual. Um, oh, the bees. Pollinated by bees, huh? All right. I'll like it, make it get, get, get some of that. Okay. So you just saw that I, I went through a bunch of stuff. And by the way, you can also search for things as well. Um, if you kind of feel like you know what you're looking for. For example, you can say show everybody and search for daylily. And there's my one plant uh, that, I, that I created. Anyway, so once you're all done, you can kind of view your wish list. And here's just the plants that you starred. And you'll notice they're in the order of the stars. Now, why would you want to do this? You would want to do this because when it comes time to actually do the trading, it happens on a specific day in the evening. Uh, it happens at midnight UTC, which is like um, five or six hours ahead of us here in the U.S. So you gotta got to look out for what time it is. And you can see that on the... Um, on the swap page at the top of it, it shows the time. Let's see, where is that? Da, da, da. Uh, scrolling over to the seed swaps homepage, the main homepage. Um, you would get there by just clicking on seed swaps up here. Uh, it says the current time on garden.org is that time. So you gotta be, gotta be aware of that. Um, so it's actually 9 a.m., but it says it's 2.04 p.m. And that's because again, the garden.org server is on UTC time. So it's five or six hours ahead. So when this thing says that um, trading begins on October 27th, what that means is actually trading is going to begin like October 26th at like 6 or 7 p.m. So you got to watch out for that. Always go back here and it'll tell you what the current time is. And that way you can kind of figure out when it is. In the future, I'm probably going to add like a countdown that says, you know, 27 minutes until trading begins. Uh, so anyway, um, something else I wanted to show you real quick. Um, let's see, where is this? Uh, Going back into the swap. Oh yes, okay, this is important. So when you go into that swap, you know you got the links for manage your swap list and access the trade list. There's another one that says manage your swap profile. You need to do this. Click on that and it's gonna ask you for your full name and address, and this is private. Only you and the host will see this. So you just put your name, Dave Smith, uh, 123 Main Street, any town, Texas, 75708. Info box. This is that box that you saw with Shell. So you can you can say, you know, my seeds are awesome. Please take what you want. And then when other people are looking at your list, they're going to see that message. And I'll show you how that looks. So if somebody says, look at, I'm logged in as DRW, update the view. Here's DRW's info box. And I said, my seeds are awesome. So that's that's how you can make that. So like, that way, if if you have information that you want people to see, that's where you would you would put that in. So I've made um, I've made my big wish list. Let's go back to the uh, front of that swap. Uh, as you can see, I have nine items in my wish list. Another cool feature is you can look at v uh, you can view view recent events for the swap, and it says that it's updated five minutes ago. So let's see what it is. Um, oh, look at this! DRW added a daylily, he added a crepe myrtle, and he added a basil. That's interesting. Well, right here from this page, you can keep an eye on this page, and when something adds something, that, when somebody adds something that you like, you can star it right there on the page, which is a pretty cool feature. So anyway, um, now let's, uh, let's say that a day has gone by, and now it's tomorrow, and you wake up, the day goes by, evening comes, you come in and it's time for the swap. There. So as you can see, the status of the swap is, um, here, let me set this up so that I can da, 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 change that. Um, wait a minute, hang on. Uh, gotta, 
No. Hang on, I got this. <laughs> Let's see, the date of the join, I'm gonna make that into the past. And then the trading is this, so da -da, there. Okay, and then, sorry, this is taking a second, but I gotta, it's kind of hard to actually emulate the actual days going by. Okay, but anyway, now, a day has gone by. It says now the trading is underway. And you, you want to get here early because other people are going to be trading and people are going to start calling dibs. So what I recommend you do is you go to your wish list. And here are your wish list items. Um, and you'll notice there's a new icon here. It's a treasure chest. And what you can do is if you have a ticket, and it says up here whether you have tickets. Um, and let me give myself some tickets here so that I can. Okay, so it'll say it's time to trade. You can claim what you want by clicking on the dibs icon. That's the treasure chest. It says you currently have three tickets to spend. So what you can do every day, you're given a number of tickets and then you can claim a dib for something for each ticket you have. So right now I can get three items for today. So I'm, you know, at the top of my wish list, I definitely want that. So click on that and it says, are you sure you want to request this? Yes. Congratulations. You have now claimed dibs on this item. It's yours. It's great. I can't wait to get that. Okay, and then, of course, that's my own. I'm not going to dib that. In fact, I'm going to remove that from my from my wish list by clicking on that minus icon. So let's get dibs on this, and then let's get dibs on that one. Okay, now I can still click, but when I do, it says, oops, you don't have enough tickets to claim dibs on an item. Come back tomorrow. And that's because I was only given three tickets to spend, and now I have zero because I've already done three dibs. Now... If I'm offering amazing stuff that everybody else wants, then what that's going to do is it will give me um, more more tickets while other people are are calling dibs on my stuff. So if on day one I get, let's just say, 20 people are calling dibs on 20 of my items, that might give me, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine more tickets that I can spend. So the people that offer the really good stuff, they get more tickets on day one. And if you offer just junk and nobody's really calling dibs on your stuff, then you're only going to get three tickets and you're not going to get any extra tickets that first day. Um, the first couple days of the swap is important because that's when everybody's grabbing the best stuff. So on day two, you'll be given something like six tickets. And on day three, you'll be given nine tickets. And on day four, you'll get 12 tickets. And the number of tickets multiplies each day because as the seed trading is continuing, it's kind of like everybody's already gotten what they want. Now, at this point, it's like it's like a free-for-all. Just grab whatever you want. You'll, it gets to the end where you've pretty much got an unlimited number of tickets. Um, if, if the trading goes on for a week, for example, you'll get more than 20 tickets on, on day seven. If the trading goes on for two weeks, you know, you're going to get like 40 tickets on the last day. So you can just, you'll be able to get as many seeds as you want. And as you get towards the end of the swap, people are like, please take my seeds. And so you just start going through there and just calling dibs on and everything that you might think that you might want, and um, so that's that's how that that's how that works. That's the that's the trading, and um, it's kind of like shopping. It's like going to uh, Amazon.com or something, and you're just looking through here, and you know just it's just such a long list of all these different things, and there's there's you know you just you can click on it, view the information, hit escape. Yeah, I'll take that, dib that, and then so on and so forth. Now, when the day is all over with and it's time to send your seeds to, um, to the host, here's what happens. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. When you go back into the seed swamp, okay, the status now says seeds are being sent to the host. So, everybody... Um, you know, I was requesting seeds from other people. Other people were requesting seeds from me. It says, you know, here's you view your bought items. These are the items that I quote unquote bought. And these are the items that I'm gonna get. I'll get those uh, from, from the host. Now, other people are going to see what they need to send me and they're gonna get a list. Now, here's how to do that. So I'm, I'm a participant. Other people have called dibs on my stuff. So you can click on access your final send sheet. Now in this tab, I'm logged in as somebody else where I can uh, I can show you what that looks like, and here it is. When you click on when you click on access your final send sheet, you're going to get something like this, and it'll it'll have the information. Read it carefully. They tell you to print this page, and then cut out each member's box. So that here's a box. This box right here. Cut that out. 
cut that one out. You're going to end up with these little slips of paper. And then each one of these slips of paper tells you, okay, to this person, they want these three things. And to that person, they want those seeds. And so you, you put together these bundles. So for, you know, BX, NC, BAX, uh, I'm going to take these three seed packets, put it in, uh, put it like a rubber band around those three seed packets, and then stick this tag, this paper, inside that rubber banded uh, bundle. And I'm done with that one. Then put this bundle together and then rubber band it together. And then put that bundle together and rubber band it. And then put that bundle together and rubber band it. And then you end up with, you know, about 20 different little bundles of seed packets. Mail it along with $7 or whatever the host tells you. The, the, the host sets how much it's going to cost. But add your money plus the bundles. Mail it to the person, whoever is the host. And it'll tell you that it needs to be sent by such a date. And after you send it, you click here to let the host know that they're on the way. And if you have a tracking number, you can enter that in and then submit. And then this way, the host can track, okay, who has not yet sent their seeds? And then they can start to hassle that person. Say, hey, you know, you need to send, or send the seeds. Um, and also the host will know when everybody's seeds has arrived. And so it's good to use tracking. Uh, it's good to put that in. And um, once the host gets those seeds, uh, she opens up each box that comes in. She'll get, you know, one box for each participant. And then she'll have all these bundles, but it's convenient for the host because you just have to find all the bundles for Dave and put them in Dave's box and then find all the bundles for Joe and put them in Joe's box. And then once you have everything in all the boxes, you just put the um, postage on, uh, address it, and off it goes and the swap is finished. So I hosted this swap uh, last year and it was awesome. And we had a table just completely covered with seeds. Uh, seed packets and it was it was really cool and the the participants uh, really had a good time we got a lot of seeds so that's the seed swap feature